Hi, my name's Gemma Spinolio. I'm one of the internal medicine vets here at Veterinary Specialist Services. Today, I'd like to talk to you about insulin pens and treating your dog for diabetes. So your vet might have recommended to you the use of an insulin pen, and I've got a few devices here as examples. Um, there's a few different products out on the market. Reasons for using a pen over the traditional technique of uh, needles and syringes and drawing up the insulin uh, manually. You may want to use a pen uh, because you need to drop a very low dose and it's more accurate compared to the manually drawing it up. Or you might find that you're not comfortable with the use of a needle and injecting your pet. And it can be a little less daunting using a pen device compared to needles and syringes. So there's two main types of insulin that dogs usually receive for diabetes and depending on which type your pet is on will depend on which pen you can use. Um, the most common products we have, uh, we have CAN insulin. This is uh, a different insulin but similar in action to Humulin, which looks like this. Humulin's a, a human product as it sounds and these two insulins, although they are treated similarly with dose, they are a different concentration and that's a really important thing to be aware of when you're selecting your needles, syringes and pens is that this insulin is 40 units per mil, whereas this insulin, Humulin, is 100 units per mil. So drawing up the same volume will give you a different dose between these two devices. So we're gonna go through the different devices that work for each insulin so you know which one is most relevant to you and your pet. Let's start with CAN insulin, which I'd say is probably the most common. This is a U40 uh, insulin, which is the 40 units per mil. And you can see that on the device in the concentration, it will say 40 IU or international units per mil. This means it's incredibly important to always match all of the Im implements you're using with a U40 product. And that's usually clearly labeled on the packaging there. Sometimes you'll see it on the outside in red. This is different to when you're using Humulin you will see it has U100 on the packaging. It can be in a few different places. Um, these will give you the wrong dose if you use the wrong syringe on the same product. So, can insulin, um, if you're doing the manual technique, which is using the vial and needle and syringe yourself, um, important steps that are common to, to both insulin products are, every day you need to assess your insulin, and this insulin is kept in the fridge. You may find that it settles out um, and looks sort of variably clear to cloudy. This is a milky insulin, so it's normal for it to look uh, uniformly sort of not clear, but it's not meant to have any precipitates or floaties. So important step, check the use by date that it's in date, and every day you need to tip your insulin about 10 times until it's uh, agitated and uniformly cloudy before you draw up. This ensures that you get uh, an equal spread of insulin and the correct dose for your dog. Once you've done that and you've got this nice cloudy appearance, um, drawing up your dose. Some instructions for using these uh, syringes are making sure you understand the gradients. And so along the side of the syringe, you can see we've got five, 10, 15, and 20. That's units. And so most of the time, if you have a small dog, you might be drawing up doses smaller than that, such as two or three units. On this syringe, two and three and an individual one unit increments are these smaller red dashes in between the five. And so it's important not to get confused by that very first one, which is zero. And so the first one is one, two, three, four, and then five. When you draw up insulin doses, you want to be measuring it to the top of the rubber stopper, not the bottom, which is another common sort of question we get, uh, where do we measure to? So tricks to drawing up, you want to turn your canister upside down, that way you don't get any air. You want to pop your needle, to the center of that rubber stopper. And I tend to overdraw my insulin and that's because you can get some bubbles. Um, and so you just wanna flick the syringe to move the bubbles up to the top and push them back into the canister until let's say we're looking to get um, two units. We'll push it up and we want the rubber stopper to be nice and flush with that number there. And you pull out, assess your dose, make sure you're happy. We've got two units in, a, in the syringe um, and that's what you're gonna administer into your dog. Uh, we'll go and show you how to inject subcutaneously and give the insulin um, and go through the actual giving technique in more detail in, a, in another video um, accompanying this one. So, um, after you've administered the insulin to your dog, 
Um, your vet may have provided you with a sharps container, otherwise if you carefully recap your needles, you can generally dispose of them at your chemist or at your local vet clinic. And you pop your insulin back in the fridge. If your dog is on canned insulin, but you have a pen, so there are two specific products we use in our dogs um, for canned insulin. And these are both called vet pen. You may see on the lid, they have a different writing. One says vet pen and one says vet pen 16. This is because these two pens can do a different degree of a dose range to each other. This one here is the standard vet pen. It goes from zero to eight, but it can also do um, half increments along the way. So on the bottom here, this is my dose indicator. And you can see here as I twist it, we've got half a unit, one unit, one and a half, two, and that goes all the way up to eight. It's really important in the vet pen that you don't twist backwards once you've dialed up a dose. If you have over dialed for your dog, all you need to do is, um, if, if the needle and the insulin's on, you're just going to have to waste that dose rather than turning back, and that's using the administrator slide here. Um, it will damage the pen mechanism if you turn back once you've dialed too far. So depending on your dog's size, you might have been sent home with either of these devices if your dog needs a much larger dose. This one goes up to 16 units. There's a few common aspects to insulin pens regardless of the product, and that is they all generally have a cap for storage, and they've got this canister, and that's what holds the, your insulin cartridge. When you go to first load your insulin cartridge, some of the troubleshooting you may have is, if this lever here is not wound all the way back, you may find that you can't get the insulin to seat. And generally, they'll wind clockwise, and that's how you seat it back ready for a new cartridge. We've got one here as an example. Um, and so what you do is you load it, uh, that end in so it's ready for the needle, into there, wind it on, and then that is now ready for a needle. But what you might have seen is when I picked up that insulin, it wasn't uniformly milky. It had sort of a plug at the bottom and it was clear at the top. It's really important if you're using a pen device that each day you assess your insulin, make sure it's in date, make sure it looks appropriate, and you still need to agitate this insulin like you did with the manual canister. We tend to tip it 10 times is enough. So if your dog uh, needs to have two units, we dial up to two, but what you're going to need is you're going to need a needle. Now these vet pen starter kits, they come with specific needle attachments for this product. These have a little protective coating. You just peel it off and then you wind it onto the top of the device here. Once it's firmly wound on, carefully pull that protective sheath off and you'll need to keep that one. And then lastly, this coats the needle itself. So when you load a insulin cartridge into a pen, you'll have to do something called priming. Priming removes the air pocket, as you can see in the top of that cartridge, from um, the rest of the liquid. And that means every time you dose your dog, you get a reliable, consistent insulin dose, not mixed with air. You may find that you need to do multiple priming shots, and I tend to draw it up to about two units, hold the pen upright, and depress the plunger. And you're gonna have to do that until you start to see insulin coming out the top. And then also have a look, there's still some air in there I can see. And so you're gonna keep going until all the air is gone and you get a steady stream of insulin squirting out the top of the needle. This can take six to eight primes before that cartridge is ready, and then you'll consistently get um, just insulin for future dosing in this device. This differs to other devices, um, and so it's really important to read the instructions specific to your pen. But you can see now, these further um, doses, we're getting just insulin liquid coming out the top, and if I rock this canister, I can't see any bubbles in there. There's another thing which might be a little hard to pick up on the camera, is um, maybe on this side. The can insulin has two glass beads. It's important not to think that those two little devices rolling backwards and forwards are an air bubble because they're not gonna come out. They help you mix the insulin. So this pen is now ready to administer to your pet. Um, the steps are similar to priming. You wanna dial up your dose. Let's say it is five units, that's there. This is the administrator device here. And so you're gonna find a position that's comfortable for your hand and your pet. Someone generally restrains the pet and you're gonna inject this under the skin and then you're gonna slide that device forward. And what you need to see is that this indicator now goes back to zero from the dose you'd selected. 
you need to keep this in your pet's um, skin, underneath the skin, for five seconds before you come out. Once you come out and you let go of that plunger, it's quite normal to have a single droplet on the end of the needle, but if you feel that the rest of the dose continues to be administered or your dial hasn't gone back to zero, then the dose may not have been completely administered. It may be tempting, but it's really important not to double dose your pet in this situation. It is safer to monitor and wait until their next dose in the evening rather than administering another one. We aren't sure how much that pet received and we really don't want to double dose because that's more dangerous. After you've given insulin, to remove the needle, you're going to need that protective cap. Carefully place over the end of the needle, nice and firmly, and then wind in the opposite direction to when you placed it. This will remove the needle, ready for storage either in a sharps container or you can drop it back to your vet clinic. So, storing your insulin pen. This advice is common to both pen varieties and it's really important that when you store your insulin pen, you don't have a needle attached. That's because when the needle is attached to this canister, it's allowing air to pass between. And that can be an issue for sterility uh, and, and sort of letting air come back into that already primed cartridge. Next thing we'll look at is if your pet is on the other type of insulin called Humulin. That's this one here. So Humulin, um, for whatever reason, your, your, your patient might be on that. We tend to dose it similar to canned insulin. Um, it can be a little bit cheaper in the long term. This means we have to use different pens that are, that are made to go with this higher concentration insulin. You'll see on this label, it will say U100 or 100 units per mil. This means you don't want to be using the U40s. You want to be using needles and syringes that say U100 on the packaging. And that means for every mil they draw up, it's 100 units when you use the appropriate insulin. Of these two pens, differences uh, involve how many units they can draw up per dose, um, but otherwise most dogs, we would say, end up on the Humapen Luxura. It can be difficult to acquire this product um, as it's a, a human product, and so you may have to talk to your vet about what types of pens we can get uh, in stock for you. So similar to the previous device, um, this pen has your chamber for holding the insulin, the cap, and what's different on this one is instead of having the click style dose selector, you have a dial. And see it comes out like this. The difference with this pen is uh, you can turn backwards if you've overdrawn the dose. Um, and the actual mechanism of giving is pushing this button down. Compared to on these pens, we said the mechanism was sliding that slide. You may find one easier than the other. So similar to previously, to load a cartridge, wind it down, make sure that that um, uh, rubber stopper at the bottom is wound all the way down, otherwise you may find it difficult to load. Again, goes in the, the way that it fits with the shape and ready for the needle to be attached. Screws on. Now these pens use their own set of needles, um, and that's these. You can get them from the chemist or from your vet clinic. It's important to get this particular length rather than shorter. A lot of the human products use a shorter needle um, and that's because we have to go through our pet's uh, skin, which is a little bit thicker. So these are similar to previously. They come in a little sealed packet. You peel them open. That screws onto the end of your insulin. Cap comes off and it's got another one of those protective caps on the top of that. So in this pen, if I wanted to dose five units, that's five there. And again, you want to prime this pen and specifically this pen must be primed before every insulin injection. Um, I tend to prime with two units I find sufficient. So holding the pen upright, depress that plunger and can you see how I didn't get insulin then? So I need to do it again until I get a steady stream, stream of insulin. So it's a little drop. There's still more air. There we go. So these doses now are consistently coming out with just liquid and no air. Great. And so you just want to inspect that cartridge. There's no bubbles in there. It's nice and uniformly cloudy. That's now ready to dose your pet. So similar to previously, let's say we're drawing up two units. Once you have injected your pet, so I tend to use a technique where I hold with one hand, depress with my thumb, 
Again, you want to stay in there for five seconds after you depress the plunger. Come out, let go, make sure you come back down to zero and that there's only a droplet left on the end and not the rest of the dose. Uh, removing the needle from this device isn't quite as sophisticated as the other. You just need to pop the cap back on and once it's screwed on, if you now twist it off, it'll remove the needle with it. Like that. And so then you can dispose of this whole device into a sharps bin um, or whatever sort of receptacle you like. And this pen is to be stored with no needle attached, cap on and room temperature.